This is an academic presentation with an elaboration in the English language of the proceedings in French during the court case of the uh, Cour de Québec, the, uh, the in effect, uh, Superior Court of Quebec. Yes, that's its uh, official name. Uh, on the case in which uh, my uh, doctoral thesis at the University of Quebec of Montréal was being blocked by the higher administration. That is the administration above our uh, Department of Science of uh, Science Politique, the Department of Political Science at the University du Québec à Montréal, which is the uh, 60s university established in all of the uh, major municipalities throughout the region of Quebec known as the Quebec province by Canada and as the Quebecois nation by the Quebecois, as well as uh, First Nations territories of whom the Quebecois are intimately related. So I will uh, play you the audio recording from the court and uh, I will be able to interpret and uh, comment on the proceedings at that time. And I started off by representing myself. When I started this, uh, it was uh, in uh, desperation because um, I had no other means of living. There, there was no other way to uh, to promote um, the, uh, the the history of my family's knowledge as elaborated by the political philosophy of European uh, nature, as I was guided by the first uh, thesis director who was uh, who had uh, passed passed away subsequently, uh, but he was um, a, a French national who, no, a Swiss national who, like Rousseau, who uh, was a uh, educated as a political science professor in France and came to make my life very difficult during the thesis, which I was obliged to carry out a comprehensive evaluation of European political philosophy as uh, as uh, listed by him in a list that took about three years to read through and to take notes of and to begin to elaborate on my thesis. And during my thesis, uh, I had to revise, had to change my hypothesis entirely, because um, I had begun with the proposition, which is basically a liberal ideological premise that um, that the periodization of history dictates that the nation state was an inevitable conclusion of the historical process and was necessary for society at the uh, at the um, dimension at which it had been grown to by the economy and technology that had arisen. So I was sort of reading Hans Kohn, who was a cultural Zionist uh, amongst those who w one would include Einstein as well, and Hannah Arendt even you know, who later on quit the Zionist movement because they realized that they had been basically uh, in a popular front that the powers of which uh, dictated, you know, it to be a state, despite, you know, the wishes of the membership, and despite the best counsels of its intellectuals. And that was the Jewish national bourgeoisie, of course, you know, in a popular front, which made it impossible to arrive at any sort of reciprocity with Palestinians and uh, any compliance with international law in the post-colonial period, which has now become neo-colonial with the advent of Zionism. So that's why Zionism has to be defeated, basically. So I'll begin to play the proceedings here. Here I'll give you sort of a taste. Dans une partie de la maison, sur une maison, 
4090076, Abraham Schwartz contre l'Université du Québec à Montréal. So, you're starting off, you know, the greffier, the, the clerk mispronounced my name right away. Okay, so it's Abraham she, Weisfeld, which she said it was Weisfeld, because she assumes, you know, Jewish people, you know, like are English. Because Jewish people, of course, were barred from going to the Catholic Francophone school system here in Quebec, until my son broke the barrier, of course. And uh, the impossible happened by a simple change of regulation. Okay, so we're starting off in court here in which I'm representing myself. And I have to take on the um, university administration who have their own lawyer, of course, you know. But I didn't have a lawyer at the time. And uh, I uh, proceeded by questioning the wisdom of the member of the jury who was opposed to accepting my thesis, even though he had already accepted it in written form when he signed on to the last uh, draft. But he had included provision for minor modifications. This was after he had accepted the major modifications that he had ordered in the first place. So each you know step of which you know takes another year you know to do the research and the writing and the editing and the formatting, and the footnotes. Okay, so, but I promised my father I'd do it, you know, so I had to do it. So here we go, we're gonna start now, you know, like, let's see what happens. Abraham so right away, the judge, Madame Juge Grenier, professor of administrative law at the University of Montréal. Okay. So she right away, you know, she sort of contests, you know, what I'm trying to do, you know, like I'm trying to speak for myself. But I was able to, after having sort of, you know, drafted and submitted, you know, the uh, the uh, requête, the motion, you know, before the Superior Court, I was able to um, pay for a lawyer because I had won a previous case in which we had a collective suit, class action suit, um, in which uh, we sued uh, the Canadian government, you know, for having uh, met our lives, uh, put our lives into jeopardy, you know, by allowing the Red Cross, you know, to buy contaminated blood from American prisoners who were um, infested with hepatitis C and providing it to Canadians like me who had to go through an operation, you know, to correct the scoliosis, my thoracic spine. And I got transfused with this blood, you know, and so I had hepatitis C virus, you know, infecting me and slowly sort of killing me, you know, for 28 years. So as a vegetarian, you know, I lasted, you know, for eight years more than the estimated, you know, duration of life with a charge, you know, a virus like that direct. So um, I got cured by the uh, Shum Hospital here in Montreal with uh, the first treatments of uh, interferon uh, antiviral agent. I was one of the uh, people they were testing the dosages on. So they gave me the super dose, you know, with, like really threw me for, you know, like a loop, you know, like worse than acid. Wow. So playing with your mind, you know, like stuff. So, you know, like so they cut down the dosage, you know, like I started the whole program again, you know, for another six months, you know, so I ended up doing it for seven months, you know, but it was still with the dosage that was too high. And it was with well, a molecule that uh, didn't remove, you know, the um, uh, the um, 
uh, psychotropic agents, you know, that were part of the uh, antiviral uh, agent that they had developed out of the antibodies, but, you know, like chemically reproduced as a clone. And this clone was not, you know, like clean yet, you know, like so I was testing the dirty one. And, you know, like it cut down, you know, the viral activity in my body from 300 to 250, but I was still infected. And I was like wiped out for three years after. Meanwhile, I'm trying to do my thesis, right? So I was only able to work on the thesis like th three months a year, you know, because, you know, the scoliosis was hitting me too. And uh, so uh, and then my thesis director, you know, got pissed off with me, you know, like and he dropped me. But he also dropped me because, you know, like he was in favor of the notion that the nation state, you know, was the ultimate constitutional model because it, you know, like was French and it happened in the French Revolution and it was prescribed by Rousseau. But when I read Rousseau, actually, you know, like he was not talking about a nation state. He was talking about a confederation as was established in Switzerland. And people mistook this, you know, for a federation. And so confused uh, poor Proudhon, you know, to believe that it was the same thing, but it wasn't. So I did a critique of Rousseau to establish that there was a concept of federation which went beyond this, you know, which went beyond the nation state. Because the confederation was confused with the nation state because it was centralized. And it wasn't supposed to be centralized as a nation because it was supposed to be confederation with various nations but it was turned into a one nation confederacy of tribes, but only for the German nation. And the German nation was defined as the Christian nation by the Nazis. And anybody who had, you know, one grandparent, whether paternal or maternal, irrespective of Judaism and irrespective of the Nuremberg laws was considered to be Jewish and eliminated. You know, like this is, you know, fundamental stuff. And now it's being reproduced, you know, as Zionism. Okay. So let's, you know, like see what happens, you know, like uh, who's going to win, you know, fascism or, uh, well, Jewish Bundism, actually. You know, like I'm a Jewish Bundist. My mother was a Jewish Bundist who raised me as a Jewish Bundist. So I was never a Zionist. You know, I always knew what the problem with Zionism was. Because the Jewish Bund, you know, like was a Jewish resistance movement against fascism, Antifa, which was founded in 1897 against Zionism, which was founded in the same year, because we wanted to stay and fight basically against Zion, the uh, the Zionists, you know, because they weren't, you know, like in the in there, you know, fighting against the fascists, who we both recognize as a threat, but their, you know, like reaction to the threat was to run away, you know, like hide in Palestine and take over the place. And then do the same thing to the Palestinians that was done to them because they figured, you know, like it was done to us, you know, it's justified under some sort of, you know, like ethical sort of construct, you know, that is delusion because it's insane, violates the principle of reciprocity. So therefore, it's logically insane, irrational, in other words. Okay, so let's go on. And uh, we continue. Should I press on to mention the about the the consent of Maître Patrice Blay. Je vois que c'est riche, spacieux, sur mon appareil tech, la Gipolica. Ma collègue est Anne-Marie Pelletier. The what's that? What can I say? Next day, I'll read the presentation. I added another piece of proof that I would like to show your attention. Et je vais copier ici qu'ils sont mieux connus que celui-là qui était déjà déposé. Comme ça, je vais vous mettre à votre disposition. Il y a un peu de ici pour que vous avez lu aussi. Vous copiez, vous donnez une copie.
So I had a, an additional piece of proof that I wanted to deposit. And so I had two copies to give to the court, you know, so I satisfied its procedure. And so they were checking, you know, what number it was, you know, it turns out, you know, there was the 24th piece of proof, you know, that I was depositing, you know, like, so it's, it's getting serious. I'm going to put you on pause because the other program that is playing the audio from the court, the pause is not working. So it, it turns out that it was my pulse that was not working. So here we go. So here I am on my own, and I have a list of uh, witnesses that I'm going to bring up, you know, to question as to what happened, what happened to my thesis, and we make a discovery. Oh, uh, by the way, do you like my background? You know, this is a presentation based on the modification of the question, which is the de les évaluations, euh, les dernières évaluations qui en sont suivies par les rejets de la thèse. Alors, c'est pertinent à la discussion pour montrer la preuve que les motivations meilleures, c'était euh, de valeur académique euh, qui était reconnue par la conférence de l'Association pour les études sur le nationalisme qui est suivie à la London School of Economics. Euh, C'est une présentation qui est acceptée parmi les 350 présentations qui étaient déposées. C'est là qui était accepté pour présentation. Suivre des modifications mineures, des discussions qui sont pertinentes aux évaluations qui étaient déposées dernièrement. OK. So I have a proof here, you know, that um, the last... Uh, modifications that I've made to the thesis, which were accepted by my thesis director, and which were in effect not accepted by two members of a four-member thesis jury, so I'll never have an even number of members of any committee, who were opposed to, you know, to my um, conclusions, basically, and they wanted to force me to support um, the continuation of the Zionist state and the continuation of the nation state model, all of which was totally contrary to my thesis, which they had already accepted. Okay, so, yeah. So, you know, this is the Aurora Borealis, you know, here in Quebec in the North. And, uh, you know, this is what, you know, you see when you're up there, and I've been up there when I was uh, in uh, Northern Ontario, yeah. And this is how it works, yeah, even more so. Yeah. Okay, here, let's go back to... Continuerai avec votre traduction. Um, J'aimerais faire une courte uh, introduction à notre point de vue par rapport à la cause. Ça va peut-être cerner le débat. Uh, J'avais déjà reçu cette pièce ici il y a fort longtemps par Taxe Opéra. Uh, je 
m'interroge toujours sur sa pertinence, mais je n'entends pas nécessairement faire un débat de technicalité. Euh, essentiellement, Madame euh, la juge, il s'agit d'une requête en révision judiciaire et mandamuse, puisque Monsieur demande d'annuler une décision de l'UCAN et So, you know, the prosecutor, you know, the, the defense for the university immediately starts off by saying that uh, I'm just sort of, you know, dealing with minutia, nothings, you know, like the minimus stuff that's not important. Then he's going to present, you know, what the real sort of, you know, issue is here. Okay, here we go. Um, de notre côté, il va y avoir quelques, euh, plusieurs arguments euh, plutôt juridiques, c'est-à-dire d'abord le délai raisonnable pour interdire le recours n'est pas effectué. Euh, il... Right away. He says, you know, that I didn't, uh, you know, uh, ask for a revision of the university's administration's decision to uh, deny me a defense hearing uh, in time, that I didn't do it in time. You know, right away, he doesn't even want the court to consider it, you know, like it's you know, so in, unimportant, you know, should just be thrown out. You know, just the same thing, you know, that Israel said to the International, international Court of Justice. <laughs> you know, the same sort of mentality. There are a delay of about two years between the decision of the Ukraine to exclude Mr. Du Program of Doctorate. It was 14. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he's saying that it was a delay of two years after the decision to exclude me from the doctoral program. This is how he puts it. And, uh, but he's not going to win. October 2005, the recourse has been attempted, I think, the 1er November 2007. Puisqu'il s'agit d'une cause de révision judiciaire, au moins en partie, le fardeau de preuve pourrait à respecter M. Weizmann et la déraisonnabilité. Euh, le règlement euh, pertinent, à notre part, le règlement 8 sur les, les cycles supérieurs de l'UQAM, comporte une clause qui est une clause privative. Euh, et euh, s'agissant d'une clause privative. Le règlement comporte une clause privative. Oui, le. So, right away, you know, the uh, university's lawyer, administration lawyer, is saying that uh, their action was uh, corresponded to a regulation that the uh, university administration has somewhere, which is uh, called the preventive clause. <laughs> okay? So, you know, the administration can prevent anything that it wants, right? That's what he's trying to argue. Uh, you know, like, this is supposed to be a university. So right away, the judge says, you know, where do you find this clause? And the, the guys, and the, it's not even, he sounds like a lawyer. I guess he is a lawyer, you know, but he's not making any sort of illegal, you know, sense here. He's saying that this regulation is found in the university regulations. And so the judge says, you know, right away, you know, without me even having to intervene, says, you know, like, you know, it takes my defense and says right away, you know, like, well, it's not in the incorporation, is it? So it's not a it's not a law. It's just a regulation, an administrative regulation, but it's not a law. Now they're before, you know, facing the law, the court, and so a regulation doesn't count anymore. It's not the Tribunal Administratif de Quebec. It's the Cour Supérieure de Quebec. Donc, c'est une clause privative du législateur, c'est une clause de la nature d'une clause privative, puisque on prévoit que le second, le, second concours, le second jury dans le processus rend une décision finale sans appel. So now he's trying to justify, you know, this uh, preventive clause by saying that in this case, you know, it's justified, you know, because this is a second jury. Because the first jury was dismissed by my thesis director because they didn't appreciate my thesis enough. Okay, something like that. Because, you know, my thesis director considers uh, my thesis to, to be excellent. Mm, he's right. So, uh, because, you know, there was a second jury, you know, that meant that it's a final decision. And so, somehow this justifies, you know, their preventive clause. I don't know. Let's listen to this guy. Uh, 
et euh, votre collègue, le juge Petras, a rendu une décision tout récemment à OHEC qui applique en conséquence avec ce, cette terminologie-là euh, le critère de la dernière. Pour la critère de la dernière. Dernière ability. <laughs> wow! I don't know, I think this justifies, you know, like in another academic decision with the uh, Oshash institution, uh, I think at the University of Montréal, and uh, in which um, there was a, a, a final, finality that was accorded to the administration in some sort of, you know, case. Okay. Parti mandamus du recours intenté par M. Weisfeld. Euh, la jurisprudence depuis l'affaire depuis la Royer, notamment, et le barreau, euh, prévoit le fardeau de preuve qui est à tout point utile, euh, l'abus de droit ou l'abus de pouvoir de la part de, de l'organe décisionnel. Euh, pour intervenir, euh, je vous soumets que rien dans la, les allégations de monsieur me sous-tendent, me, me permettent de conclure ainsi. Et enfin, il n'y a aucun pouvoir lié. En l'espèce, puisque le mandamus requiert qu'il s'agit de qu'il s'agisse d'un pouvoir lié avant d'ordonner d'ordonner au corps public d'agir, euh, je vous soumets que le recours à mandamus est, 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 est irrecevable de toute façon. Il y aura de ma part un argument de pertinence en cours de route. Euh, Monsieur Weisfeld a déposé le rapport de l'homme euh, de l'ICAM parmi ses pièces. Euh, il a assigné euh, l'ombudsman de l'époque également, qui sera ici, qui est ici quelque part ce matin. Euh, je vais m'objecter à, à son témoignage, puisque ce n'est pas pertinent. Wow! <laughs> OK, so, you know, he gets shot down uh, on, you know, the first, you know, objection, you know, of recibility. That is, he's saying, you know, like, the, you know, the court shouldn't even, you know, hear what I have to say. And argue and prove, and then he's you know saying you know, you know like that, uh, um, you know this this piece of proof that I deposited, you know, which is a report from the ombudsman of the university, which was favorable to my defense hearing, and which is an academic principle actually, in the uh, academic code, which is not written, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, you're saying you know that this is not receivable, you know, like the, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> OK, let's see what happens here. Uh, you know, after all, the ombudsman only is providing an opinion. <laughs> that's all it is, you know. Oh, OK, you know, like that's right away it abolishes the, you know, the the uh, uh, position of the ombudsman, you know, has no authority, you know, no legal standing whatsoever, according to him. Dans le pouvoir, selon la réglementation, c'est de faire des recommandations qui ne lient personne. Et euh, essentiellement, il rendrait une, une, il donnerait un témoignage d'opinion. Vous saying that he would only provide a, an, a, 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 a terminage, a, um, um, question answering, answering questions. Uh, that would only be a matter of his personal opinion and it has no legal standing, you know, because his office doesn't have any legal power to enforce what the opinion of the ombudsman is. This is the same argument being used against the International Court of Justice because it has no legal power to enforce its decision, its order, which is labeled here an opinion. So, you know, Israel is going to say the thing. Same thing, you know, about the International Court of Justice. It's just an opinion of 15 judges. You know, it doesn't count, you know, because it can't enforce it. Therefore, it has no legal standing according to, you know, this nation state, you know, which is sovereign. Sovereign means, you know, like a king, <laughs> like King David, you know, like who conquered Jerusalem. Okay. Cela dit, euh, M. Weisfeld a signé deux professeurs d'université qui avaient agi sur, son, sur, sur le second degré, M. Aoun qui est dans la salle et M. Weinstein qui est à l'extérieur, qui tous deux nous ont indiqué tous les deux ce matin qu'ils avaient euh, 
des cours à donner euh, cet après-midi. J'ai cru comprendre qu'ils apprécieraient témoigner le plus rapidement possible. Et M. Weinstein va donner suite euh, à cette demande. Ben, you know, like, Ben, you know, the administration lawyer, you know, like, is saying, oh, you know, like, he's uh, subpoenaed two professors here, you know, who have courses in the afternoon, you know, so, you know, there shouldn't be, you know, too much time, you know, wasted, you know, uh, questioning these professors, because they have to get out of here and go back to their courses, you know, that's more important than, than hearing their testimony before the court. And, you know, I had uh, evidently discussed this previously, with the professors and assured them that they wouldn't be denied their, their God-given right, you know, to give a lecture. So uh, we'll see what happens. À propos de, de délai euh, euh, dans le dépôt des requêtes, euh, il y a des argumentations à suivre euh, avec la jurisprudence euh, qui appartient aussi. Et je, je présume qu'on peut remis ça à la plaidoirie euh, pour euh, traiter euh, comme il faut. Ah, Pourquoi Monsieur Lavoie n'est pas ici pour me donner son opinion sur la cause. C'est à moi de décider de la cause. Pas à Monsieur Lavoie. Monsieur Lavoie, déjà, vous avez déjà fait affaire avec l'ombudsman. So, Judge Chikaranier uh, supports the um, university's lawyer and decides that the ombudsman cannot testify since his report is already deposited, you know, so she can read it. So that's, that's okay, you know, but she considers, you know, the ombudsman's uh, Termonage uh, testimony would only be a matter of opinion. Well, that's... Il a donné son opinion, il a écrit un rapport. Donc, oui. je dois tenir compte comme les rapports. Il y a son aussi, comme les autres rapports. D'après à témoigner, il ne pourrait donner qu'un témoignage de tout le monde. Il ne peut pas faire ça. Euh, après le processus. Euh, à moins qu'il veuille témoigner sur des faits, c'est ce qu'on a pu faire. Euh, il peut témoigner à propos. Euh, Quel est le but du témoignage? Le délai, le délai euh, dans le processus euh, qui est suivi des évaluations par les membres de jury, qui est un point qui sera tracé par euh, Maître Lui euh, pour. Euh, Peut-être M. Hugh va proposer que le délai a couru en train de faire une évaluation pour l'ombudsman. C'est un délai par raisonnable. Non, il a proposé que le délai entre la décision prise par l'université et le délai pour intenter les procédures est un délai de raisonnable. Il n'a pas so I asked for the testimony of the ombudsman to affirm that we had gone through a process of trying to mediate with the university administration for two years and, and he finally came down with an evaluation a report which took two years to produce so I wasn't uh, late in addressing the court you know with my motion because of this um, process, you know, undertaken, you know, with the ombudsman, which would be the recommended procedure in any case, you know, because first you go through the available academic, you know, procedures to resolve the difference, you know, with the administration before you take it into the public domain 
and in the public domain of civil society in, in the Cour Supérieure de Québec. Le rapport de l'Ombudsman Pierre Paul Lebois, c'est une opinion juridique par un avocat de tenir une matrice en droit social et en droit du travail avec l'Université de Montréal, une matrice en administration publique avec l'école INAF. M. Lebois a aussi enseigné une négociation de droit du travail à l'école de Barreau et en charge des cours en relation au travail à INAF depuis 1996. Il est présent et occupe le poste de vice-recteur à la source humaine du Yukon. Excusez-moi. Motion d'exclusion de rapport de l'Ombudsman. On, de... on pense à. Oui, je m'excuse. On parle du rapport de, de l'Ombudsman. Oui. Et... L'Ombudsman, son rapport est au dossier. J'en ai déjà fait connaissance. Ah, mais il y a des raisons pour lui prendre comme un, un, ex, un témoin expert. Non, ce n'est pas, pas un témoin expert. L'expert ici en droit, c'est moi. Oui, mais. Euh, c'est a... à moi. Oh, I'm going too far here. So um, I'm trying to argue, you know, for the testimony of the uh, ombudsman, despite the decision already made, you know, by the judge, excluding the testimony of the ombudsman, you know, as merely an opinion, which is probably, you know, like a conventional, you know, court procedure. And I'm still arguing, you know, that even though, you know, it's not necessary for him to testify as, as to the uh, procedure, the, the facts of the delay, you know, in, in the... Uh, in the deposition of the motion before the Cour Superior. So, well, you know, I was arguing, you know, that nonetheless, you know, he could be testifying as a, an expert, you know, like a, uh, an expert in the domain, you know, like, because he has, you know, academic knowledge, he knows what the academic code is and stuff like that. But, you know, the judge says, no, the expert here is me. <laughs> okay. Pas de vice non, si oui ou non, vous avez le droit au recours que vous demandez, c'est pas à monsieur. Les avocats ne témoignent pas pour donner des opinions juridiques ici. Personne ne fait jamais. She says, you know, lawyers don't testify here, you know, to give an expert opinion, you know, nobody is going to tell a judge, you know, that they're more expert than a judge. Monsieur Lavoie, il dit là, s'il a des choses à relater factuelles, ça c'est une chose, mais il ne peut pas donner son opinion de juriste à la cour. L'opinion qu'il aura à donner, ce sera la vôtre et celle de Maître Yous. Et je partagerai entre les deux. Mm -hmm. On ne fait pas venir des avocats à moins qu'il s'agisse de droit étranger pour témoigner sur le droit. C'est mon rôle à moi de décider selon les principes juridiques applicables si oui ou non votre demande de mandat mieux est recevable. Mais une chose que je peux ajouter. Je comprends que vous n'êtes pas avocat, là, mais c'est pour ça que parfois c'est plus simple d'être oui. pas présenté par avocat. Mais ça fait du sens aussi euh, qu'on peut bénéficier par euh, le terminage euh, de l'ombudsman, euh, le rapport à lequel c'est euh, déjà déposé. Je fais référence aussi pour le, le chant du Québec des toiles de liberté humaine, où c'est inscrit que. Oh, mais j'ai une version en anglais. Whereas the rights and freedoms of the human person are inseparable from the rights and freedoms of others and from the common well-being, every accused person has the right to a full and complete defense and has the right to examine and cross-examine witnesses. Je invoque ça comme principe. Oui, mais vous n'êtes pas l'accusé, est-ce qu'il va? Oui, mais comme principe, dans une charte. <laughs> oh! So, oh, now it's getting serious. I didn't remember having done this. So, you know, like, uh, I'm still appealing, you know, to the judge, you know, to change her opinion, her decision, not opinion, oh, no, no, <laughs> decision, uh, you know, invoking, you know, the Charter uh, of Rights and Liberties, you know, in which it said, you know, that a person has a right to a full defense, etc., etc. So the judge, you know, replies, well, you're not, be you're not the accused here. You know? <laughs> so I said, you know, yeah, but it's still, you know, a principle, you know, of, of judicial procedure, isn't it, you know, like, non, il y a quelque pas. chose. On, on a le droit d'interroger, de contre-interroger des témoins 
tant et aussi longtemps que leur témoignage est acceptable en droit. So, the judge says, she's being very patient with me. So, like, you know, like a professor. And I'm a student. So, you know, and Judge Garnier, you know, replies, you have the full right, you know, to uh, counter and interrogate, you know, the witnesses and here, uh, but there can only be testimony that is uh, acceptable. She used the word acceptable, not even pertinent. Just acceptable. Okay, well. Comme je viens de vous dire, les tribunaux n'écoutent pas d'experts en droit puisque ce sont eux qui sont chargés de dire le droit. Hmm. Oui, mais je pense qu'il y avait raison à considérer que c'est que ajouter un, euh, un permanage qui va compléter les présentations qui sont utiles pour la cour en considération. Malheureusement, je ne peux pas accepter ça. So I, you know, still, you know, reply and say, you know, like it would be beneficial to the court, you know, to hear the testimony as a, as a matter, as a, as a conclusion, you know, as to uh, what has happened here. But she says, you know, sorry, but I can't hear. Alors, um, il y a certaines uh, pressions par les témoins parce qu'ils sont avec des responsabilités académiques uh, qui doivent uh, suivre cet après-midi. Et um, malgré qu'il se fait logique que j'ai fait présentation de mon recours uh, avec David uh, en première instance, je défère à l'agenda des témoins et le uh, uh, professeur Samuel uh, qui est venu de Sherbrooke uh, pour faire témoigner. Et on peut lui donner une certaine précédence euh, ce matin pour qu'il puisse se libérer euh, ses responsabilités académiques cet après-midi. De même part, euh, je pense qu'on peut traiter euh, le témoignage. Oui. Et le euh, professeur Weinstock aussi peut être euh, compris dans les délibérations ce matin, je pense. Euh... Est-ce qu'il est dans la salle? Non. Il est présent. Monsieur Aoun, il est ici, M. Weinstock est d'accord. Ça, je propose qu'on uh, demande uh, que le professeur Samuel se présente comme témoin à cette fois-là. So now I'm calling Professor Samuel to testify. Three years younger than me. Maître Yves, est-ce que vous demandez de prison de témoin? Euh, vous avez le... Oui, vous avez raison, monsieur euh, Olivier, vous témoignez finalement. Effectivement. Merci. Vous pouvez attendre à l'intérieur. Oui. Je ne crois pas que madame soit témoin. Madame, est-ce que vous êtes témoin? Et monsieur? Je suis témoin. Non. 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 Non, non, vous n'avez pas sorti, madame. Oui. Merci. <coughs> Alors, vous savez, vous avez des questions. Professeur Samuel. Oui, pourriez-vous parler? Vous ne parlez pas très fort, donc j'ai beaucoup de difficulté à vous entendre parler en me regardant. Je peux vous entendre. D'accord. La même chose pour vous, euh, pour les gens. 
we zijn vier op tien. Uh, is nog zaak dat gedaan, het titel de doctorat, de Universiteit Saint-Esprit de Kazlik. Zeker. Avec uh, quel département uh, est-ce que vous êtes réuni à cette fois? Philosophie politique. Et uh, avec uh, lequel uh, directeur de thèse? Docteur Nassif Massad. Avez-vous pris connaissance des règlements de l'Université de Québec-Montréal qui appliquent à un deuxième jury? Euh, C'est après avoir accepté euh, que je sois sur euh, le jury. Par après, j'ai compris qu'il y a eu euh, deux comités avant moi qui ont été défaits. So, I asked him what his, uh, where he did his doctorate. And then... I asked him if he was aware of the regulations that are pertinent to the second jury that he was a member of, in my case. And he replied that he was aware that there was uh, two previous committees. He meant juries, but there weren't. There was just one previous. He meant that he was a member of the second one. But he's talking as if he wasn't a member of the second jury anymore, which is the case. You know, he had resigned. So, uh, I should have noticed that. Avez-vous lu euh, ou est-ce que vous êtes au courant de la paragraphe euh, 10.20.2 après la décision du deuxième jury du règlement numéro 8 de euh, l'Université de Québec, pièce P5. <coughs> en fait, madame, madame, P5 n'est qu'un extrait. Si vous cherchez le règlement complet, c'est que deux. Vous êtes écrit la décision du de deuxième jury après examen du texte de la thèse peut être l'une et suivante. A. Acceptation majeure et unanime de la thèse pour soutenance sans correction ou avec correction mineure. B. Demande majoritaire de l'unanime de correction majeure seulement lorsque la thèse n'a pas déjà fait l'objet des corrections majeures demandées par le premier jury ou par le deuxième jury lors de son examen de premier texte de la thèse, puisque l'étudiant n'a le droit de présenter un nouveau texte qu'une seule fois après correction majeure. Ou trois, rejet majoritaire de l'unanime de la thèse. Alors, le cas A. Acceptant, acceptation majeure, majoritaire ou unanime de la thèse pour soutenance, sans correction ou avec correction mineure. Est-ce que vous êtes au courant avec ce règlement? Oui. So basically, you know, he agrees that this is a regulation and says, you know, that a second jury can ask, can, you know, accept the thesis, you know, as uh, in a majority of, a, of its opinions, and also ask for uh, minor modifications. Est-ce que vous êtes au courant de la lettre qui est envoyée pour les membres du jury par euh, Lorraine Trudeau, euh, euh, qui était adjoint au euh, M. Norbert Morin, 
le 8 avril 2004, il fait référence à les règlements et qui fait des citations. Est-ce que vous avez la lettre que vous venez à montrer C'est quelle, quelle pièce Ça, c'est pièce D55. D55 D55. Vous êtes écrit conformément au règlement des études de deuxième et troisième siècle. Cite article 10.19.2B. Vous pouvez rendre une recommandation d'acceptation avec réaction mineure ou sans réaction, avec mention accordée à titre indicatif, ou de recommandation de rejet sans droit de reprise avec le commentaire de gestion de la recommandation. Est-ce que vous êtes là? Parle d'une telle lettre qui était employée à votre attention. Non, ce n'était pas mon attention, ça. C'était euh, l'intention de M. Laurent Oui. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez reçu une acte pareil comme euh, les autres membres du jury? C'est la quatrième. Well, let's conclude this session and uh, keep the surprise for the next uh, video registration of the uh, court proceedings with commentary. So, bye for now.